Hey guys, welcome to the 11th video of my series on regex in Python and in this video we're going to talk about compilation flags. So what are compilation flags? Compilation flags are basically the flags which you can pass while you are compiling a pattern string into a pattern object so that you can modify the standard behavior of the patterns. So for example, in the second video of the series, we saw how we can pass a flag for uh, ignoring the case. So by putting flags equal to re.i, we were able to make um, our we were able to make the pattern um, case free, case insensitive by putting re.i, right? So you can just change the modify the standard behavior of a pattern by putting some flags, and there are multiple kind of flags in Python programming language, uh, which Python programming language supports in the re module. So these are given here. So you have eight kind of um, compilation flags which behave differently in different conditions. And if you want to have multiple ones, you can just separate them between the bit, uh, using the bitwise or, or the um, you can also call that a pipe symbol. So by using that, you can specify multiple compilation flags while you are compiling a pattern. So let us go through each one of them one by one to understand them better. So let us first of all go through the re dot ignore case. So re dot ignore case is a very special pattern uh, compilation flag which will simply um, make your pattern case insensitive. So let's say you want to find all the occurrences of the in your given text, but the case of the text case of the pattern doesn't matter. T can be capital, H can be capital, anything can be capital, everything can be capital. So how can you make a pattern for that? So for making a pattern of that in the simplest way possible. All you have to do is re.compile, you just write the, but in the flags, you say re.i, which is ignore case. And now when you try to highlight the regex matches by passing your pattern and the text in which you want to apply that pattern, look at that. The is T capital is also matching. The with T small is also matching. So in this way, we are able to ignore the case, right? Without writing that particular thing in our pattern explicitly. So in this way, compilation flags can modify the behavior of a pattern. So let us come to the next example, which is re.multiline. So re.multiline is basically a flag which is particularly useful when you want to use the um, end of line and beginning of line boundary matchers. So we have already seen the concept of boundary matchers. We have already seen that there are two boundary matchers, which are caret symbol and the dollar symbol, which are used to match the start of line and the end of line. So what if I want to uh, use them? Uh, if I want to use them, I have to specify a flag which is re.multiline or re.m. What will that do is that it will make your regex engine consider each line separately. So you have to enforce that behavior actually. So if you want to do that, uh, let's say in this example, I want to find all the lines starting with capital A. So what can I do for that? I can specify a pattern in which I can write re.compile so by putting caret, I mean start of line, capital A, and then anything can pass, and then flags, re dot multiline. So only if you put re dot multiline, it will work. So pattern dot, or let's say highlight the matches, pattern txt. Look at that. All the lines which are started with capital A got highlighted because we found them. The match was um, succeed successful at those places. So this is how you use the re dot multiline. If you do not use the re dot multiline flag, what will happen actually is that the regex engine will not consider each line separately. It will consider complete text as a single thing and it will execute it over that. So that will not work that you want here. Uh, you will not get the desired result. Now, finally, three third part, which is re dot dot all. So where can you use the re dot dot all? So let's consider an example to match all the text after and including car. So in the above text, which we have here after car, I want to match all the text. Now we know that there is a dot character, the dot meta character, the dot meta character can match anything except the new line. So if I just put dot asterisk, it will match up to here only. It will not go to the next line because slash and is not being matched. But what if there was a meta character, which can match new line as well, then I will get the complete result, which I want. So in order to get that, all you have to do is you can change the behavior of your dot character. So if you just write pattern is re dot compile, start from car. And after that, you can have anything. 
so if you just if the flags if you just specify re dot s which is re dot dot all shortcut and then you check pattern and the text look at that what happens is we get everything so what is happening here is um now your dot character is matching any kind of character and any kind of character repeated any number of times means everything after car so you are getting the complete result right so if i just if you just want to print it pattern dot search text uh, you will get that car pass before him in a very high speed and like that right so in this way you get the desired result so i hope the concept of i dot dot all is also clear you can use it in all the cases where the dot symbol uh, should also match a new line character as well now let's come to a very interesting part very interesting compilation flag which is re dot unicode actually um, it is the default unicode so if you just try to create any kind of pattern in python 3 a very simple one let's say it is simple hello even that pattern has that particular flag okay it has re dot unicode so if you just write pattern dot flags it has 32 number 32 is the name for uh, the uh, the number for i dot unicode flag so it is by default present in any kind of pattern so now let us see its actual use the actual use is that any kind of text which is written in any language um, let's say i have written here something in hindi and now i want to find all the separate words in it so how can i go about doing that so the unicode actually knows that what is a alphanumeric character in that particular language and what is not okay so let me just run it like txt is this and pattern dot find all uh, first of all let me make a pattern slash w plus okay so pattern dot find all txt okay so we are getting a weird result here i am getting ma cha and so on whereas i wanted this as a one result this as a one result because in hindi this particular thing is a word this particular thing is a word so actually this is happening because the um, unicode information about what is an alphanumeric character and what is not in this particular language is not clear to the regex module that i'm using right now the re module but there is a solution the solution is used to use the um uh, the third party regex module you can simply do pip install regex and by doing that what will happen is that you can import it and it contains uh, more information about the unicode patterns so if you will just do pattern is equal to regex dot compile in which you will pass slash w plus and now if you try to do pattern dot find all look at that you will get the complete words so it is happening because the actual the third party regex module contains more information about the unicodes uh, the unicode characters that you have which ones are alphanumeric which ones are not and so on so this is how you can use it so unicode is actually a very nice facility which helps you to work with different different kind of characters in different languages as well so yeah this was re dot unicode and this brings us to re dot locale so first of all you need to know what is a locale locale is a set of environment variables that you have for your computer which defines which language is your computer using which country has been set uh, which time zone has been set maybe which character and coding settings are being used and so on but right now the use of this flag is discouraged in python 3 as the locale mechanism is quite unreliable and it creates a different uh, different kind of problems as well so that's why we are not going to take a look at that one we are just going to move on to the next part which is re.ascii so re.ascii or ascii anything you can say is another compilation flag which is quite useful in some cases so what it, it will do is that it will um, perform ascii only matching so it will perform ascii only matching basically it means that it will consider only a to z small a to z and 0 to 9 as the alphanumeric characters so basically when i was running um, this particular text trying to find the uh, the alphanumeric characters it was considering um, these things as the alphanumeric characters but in ascii we do not have these characters 
So in that particular case, only capital A to Z, small a to Z and 0 to 9 will be considered as alphanumeric characters. So let me show an example. Consider that we have some characters from 0 to 256 and I join them. So I have all these characters from 0 to 256. These are all the characters that you have. Okay. And now I try to write a pattern in which I want to find uh, all the I want to find all the characters, all the alphanumeric characters and I just try to look at the result. So look at that. In the result, we can see that these characters, they are also being considered as alphanumeric. So why are they being considered as alphanumeric? Because the pattern that I am using is using the Unicode flag. So since you are using the Unicode flag, in the Unicode dictionary, these characters, which are not A to Z, small A to Z and 0 to 9, they are also considered as alphanumeric which is not you may want in some cases so what you can do in those cases is that you can use the ascii flag and once you do that your pattern look at that it does not show re dot unicode anymore so now your pattern will only consider ascii characters a to z small a to z 0 to 9 as the alphanumeric characters and now if i look at the result look at that only 0 to 9 capital A to Z, small a to Z and the underscore are being considered as alphanumeric characters. These extra ones are being not considered as alphanumeric characters. So this is how you can use ASCII if you want to consider only the standard ones, the standard characters as the alphanumeric characters, nothing else. So this was all about re.ASCII. Let's come to the second last thing which is re.verbose or re.x. It can be used when you want to um, allow some comments or any kind of flexibility while writing your pattern. So let me give an example. So re.compile. So if I just specify the flags, the flags as re.x, now what can I do is that, so let's say in this example, I want to find um, all the words, let's say. So I just put slash w. Now I can put a plus anywhere after any number of spaces. So just to just for readability purpose. So let's say I just put plus after a space just for readability purpose. So that is also valid. This space will not be considered like a character like a literal. It will not be considered like that. And also you can write some comments by putting a hash. This is a comment. So this is also not a part of your pattern. So if you just try to print your pattern. Um, okay. So if you just try to use it pattern dot find all txt you will get your desired result. This is a simple text. So all these things have no uh, uh, effect upon your um, result, but they are adding readability. So you can use the verbose flag. If you want to be a bit verbose about your regex pattern, you want to add some comments by putting a hash symbol and then writing some comment, or you want to have any number of spaces between anything just for just for more readability. So this is what re.verbose does. So I hope the concept of verbose flag is also clear. Let us move on to the last flag, which is the debug flag. So debug flag will actually uh, give you some more information about the compilation pattern. So let me just put flag as I dot debug. And if I just write run it, look at that. What is happening? It has specified that um, in my pattern, the first thing is a literal whose value is eight. So slash B has a eight value. So literal eight is what we start with then max repeat one which means the plus flag a uh, plus symbol plus meta character so max repeat and then in the range 97 to 101 which means a to e there is a range 97 to 101 7 to 9 have a sky range 55 to 57 so everything is being explained in a very nice format by using this debugging feature so by doing this you can easily debug and try to understand how your compilation pattern is actually going to be understood by the regex engine so by doing this, you will get the desired, um, re, uh, the desired result. So yeah, so this is all about all the different kind of compilation patterns. Some of them are quite useful in different kind of conditions. So I hope you understood it. If you still have doubts, you can put them in the comment section below. That's it from this video. Thanks for watching.